sports that I've always wanted to play. And that's the truth, right? I mean, what other career can we talk about where I'm just getting started in my late 50s? And that's how it feels because uh, I, I haven't I haven't had the opportunity to play characters like Anne Holiday. And I feel like this part, this role is going to swing the door right open to parts that I've really been wanting to play and just wasn't old enough. And my mentors in this business, whom I met when they were my age now, if you can imagine, right? I mean, um, they were old ladies back then. Meanwhile, holy hell, you know, um, you know, I've I've been channeling them too. And so, so many times they said to me, and you have to remember, I was in my late teens, early 20s when I'm having these conversations with these insane women, incredible mentors, who who said, your best years as a character actress are in your 50s and 60s and 70s. And like, here I come. And then this part comes along, David, and you're like, the bitches were right. Holy hell. Um, here it comes. So I'm I have been very invigorated and reinvigorated by this opportunity for sure. Wow. Who, I mean, I know you were discovered quote unquote by Charlotte Ray, like who were your mentors? Like kind of when you were that, you know, well, age. Get ready for the name drop. I had this, we called ourselves the coven, uh, this amazing group of women that I, I did a play. It started out doing a, well, I did a play with Eileen Heckart, um, James Lapine's table settings. Stalker Channing played my mother, um, and Eileen Heckart played my grandmother, and she introduced me to Elaine Stritch and Ruth Gordon and Jerry Page, and, you know, they became the East Coast version, and the West Coast version became, you know, Cloris Leachman and B. Arthur and Betty White, and sadly, when we just lost Betty, um, they're all up there, you're right, I slowly but surely, like, they've left me, and, um, I, I just feel it was no accident, you know, that Betty passes and here comes this role. So I think she, you know, not that she's working on my behalf, but I I think um, it, it does not, it does not surprise me the timing of all this. I'll just say that without getting too like spiritual rub a Buddha light a candle thing. Yeah. Well, I'm in LA today, so you can get spiritual and Buddha and all of that. And you can name drop too. This podcast was almost called name dropping, but oh, I love that. I love here that. It was either that or behind the velvet rope, but here we are. But name dropping was our very close second. So you can name yes. drop all you want here today. Well, I had I had these incredible mentors, not only these incredible actresses, obviously. Um, but they really, from a very young age, I was so, it was so serendipitous, obviously being discovered by Charlotte and Norman Lear, and then, you know, having a role written for you. And then, oh my God, this show lasts 10 seasons. What are we doing? Um, a career is, is bought, but, um, really my life changed at 16 when I did this play in New York and, and met Eileen and then went on to befriend these other women who really convinced me at a, a, a time when it was, oh, she's so lucky she got discovered. They convinced me I not only had the goods, but that I needed to fall in love with acting. And they saw themselves in me and let's go. You've got a career in front of you, kiddo. And boy, talk about validation. Um, and again, serendipity. It's really, it, it was a life changer, I have to say. And I just feel like I, I'm channeling parts of all of them in Anne. Wow. When you do look back to the beginning, like, you know, facts of life, obviously, yes. Natalie Green, like what just overall, I'm sure you have many memories, but like, how would you describe that time in your life? Like what words come to mind? Oh, again, I I, I mean, obviously serendipity, but um, it was just a joy. It was work and it was treated as such. This was our job. And so we learned how to take it seriously, but not ourselves. We had each other, which is, I think, one of the reasons the show did so well is not only the chemistry of the four girls, um, which we have in spades, that's just luck of the Irish. But um, I do have to say, going through something like that at that those ages with other people is incredibly helpful. Um, and we always talk about that even today, um, ab absolutely with the passing of Norman, right? We're, we've been on email chain since email started and texting started. So um, there was this sense of, you know, no one has the shared experience that we do. And uh, so it, it's really kind of something to go through that with somebody else. I mean, people talk about, oh, I had that same experience in college. That was four years. We were together 10. So it, it's this, it's much more familial. Um, at the same time, it was also a kick in the pants. 
And we're also, um, TV land was so small back then that we all knew each other. So this, you know, six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon, there's a joke in my friend group that it really should be six degrees of separation between Mindy Cohn. Um, and that's for all of us. We just met each other and, and all the film stars and all the, you know, you name it. Hollywood was even smaller, let's put it that way. Um, and this is also before TMZ and social media. And so there was a real sense of privacy um, and not so fame oriented. It was really more um, work oriented. Yeah. Yeah. It's changed, right? Like it is more fame oriented now. Like the lines, I think, between, I guess, celebrity and non-celebrity are blurred because of social media. I mean, it's, yeah, it was a different time. You know, let me put it this way. I used to not, no, granted that's youth too, but also there was this sense of like, you can wear anything, you can do anything, going to the premiere, going to this. I have been calling in every fashion house favor to get myself outfitted for the premiere, for, you know, the press junket, you know, because it's like, I know that that is a marketing tool now. It used to just be, you go and promote the show. And now it's really, you're promoting yourself, right? Like, this is how I look now. This is what's happening. Look at me, look at me. Um, and I'm very uncomfortable in doing that, but I know it's just, it's, it's part of the deal, you know? It's part of the deal. Like who's looking, let's think of, like you said, you're invigorated. You want more meaty parts like this next. It's just, it's a whole different yeah. business now, right? For sure. For sure. Do you have a favorite memory of just your whole time on Facts of Life? I mean, I know that that's, there's so many, but like, is there something that just stands out to you? I have to say when we got to travel, so we did two TV movies, one in Paris, and then three years later, we went to Sydney, Australia and shot there for a month. And we were in Paris for a month. And I have to say, we there was that sense of familiarity because we were with each other, right? And we were playing characters that we play every day. But that sense of adventure. So Natalie, Tootie, Blair, and Joe went to Paris. Well, so did Mindy, Nancy, Kim, and Lisa. And so, you know, it was really fun to travel together like that and have an adventure. And we we made a lot of memories together, for sure, on those two, two trips. Do you have a favorite storyline of Natalie's? Um. Not really storyline, but I have a favorite episode. Um, and it seems to be all of us. Um, we loved it when it was just the four girls, um, which was rare. We usually had a guest star or, you know, something like that, which was fabulous too. But there's an episode called Cruisin' where Blair uh, takes borrows her dad's Cadillac and the girls go out cruising in Peekskill, which in and of itself is very 80s because, right, you say that now and people are like, excuse me? Right, <laughs> Bruce downtown peak scale. Um, but it was the thing to do in all girls school upstate New York. Right. And, but it was an episode where we shot in this car on the streets of studio city at Burbank, <laughs> but um, for five days, the four of us in a car and we had, not only was the episode written really well and it was very funny. There was no laugh track and no 